Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode, we are going to do two launches, and this is the second of those launches. This is uh, upgraded Nico 944 with boosters. If you recall, the Nico 944 had a fairly low thrust-to-weight ratio initially, and that was not very good because we lost a lot of Delta V there. Well, I've added boosters to help. And these are Soyuz-ish boosters, except, of course, they have the NK-15s on the bottom instead of the Soyuz engines. Um, so they burn for 2 minutes and 12 seconds. And our initial sea level thrust weight ratio is still a modest 1.26, but we're much heavier. In fact, we needed a second one of the um, Saturn One instrument units. I put it on the first stage. And because we're above the 1,500 ton limit otherwise but we've retained the stuff to try and recover the first stage but I don't know how far out it'll get it burns for 2 minutes and 48 seconds now so it's bigger also it's been lengthened so but otherwise the other stages are the same this is the same second stage of the four NK uh, 15 V's and then finally the third stage with four NK 19's and the payload is simply uh, a fuel tank again, right? And we hope it doesn't have to try and make orbit on its own. Um, yeah, it would have trouble doing that given that uh, it only has a 0.03 thrust to weight ratio. It's not really meant for that. It's meant for people to grab fuel from it, not for it to have to use the fuel on its own. I think maybe I should upgrade its RCS ports too. I will do that by adding another set. So instead of having just one set, Okay, it's got communications, it's got uh, enough solar panelry. We've got better solar panels now, I noticed. But this'll, this'll do. It's a 90 ton payload. And let's lock it again. So it's only 5 tons shy of what the N1 could do. However, it's got far fewer first stage engines. Also, fewer second stage engines for that matter. Um, the N1 had 30 engines at the bottom, we have 17, so we're doing things right. It's somewhat ironic that the Russian space program started off with a rocket w doing boosters, you know, getting boosters right with Soyuz, and then sort of abandoned the whole booster thing, uh, at least until Angara. I don't recall another rocket with boosters off the top of my head. So, yeah, uh, well, I mean, of course, uh, Energia. Energia had boosters, and those were good boosters. When they do boosters, they do good boosters, but why Why no boosters on N1? Maybe they were just too big. But I decided that it was reasonable, and so we're trying it here. You can see it takes 27 days to build. It'll take 47,000 funds, so practically equivalent to one of the moon missions. But we're hoping to recover the first stage. We'll see how that goes. You'll notice first stage utilization is only 81% because I wanted to make it tall to accommodate the boosters properly. Anyway, I think that says it all for this one. I'll build it. I think uh, there's hopefully no issues. I didn't put separatrons on the on these boosters though. I'm hoping that the decouplers will handle it. So it's possible they will crash into the center. Maybe I'll put separatrons, even though it might take a little bit of time. Too bad these are sort of ugly and ruin the look. Okay, we'll go with that for now and see if the boost those are really necessary. And we will build this. Okay, so this is the mission that we are going to launch first. This is the Deimos lander on a Centaur and then on the Nico 621C. Uh, C because uh, there have been modifications to the stage timing just a little bit. But in general, it's not too unusual. Uh, 2 minutes and 20 seconds for the first stage with the 6 NK-15s, 3 minutes and 30 seconds for the second stage with the with the 2 NK-15Vs, and then 1 NK-19 burning for 6 minutes. And then two cent a dual engine Centaur stage burning for 8 minutes and 20... Um, no, that's the 7 minutes and 10 seconds. And then... And it's not reading the delta V right, that should be more than 3,000. And it's not reading the payload right, that should be 25 tons for the payload, but I'm not too sure what's up with that. But uh, then we, oh, we should leave, oh, pops out like that. Okay, hold on, let's add some more height. 
doesn't make me feel very good. But anyway, then we've got an Astra stage. That uh, should be familiar from our previous Mars mission, but there have been changes. You might already notice the solar panels. There's also a small go-around stage, which doesn't have independent communication. Well, I mean, it's got the commutrons, but not much else. It does have solar panels, and the core is a Ranger Block 3 core. And then finally, the lander itself. Big differences, the lander itself now has its own antenna, uh, its own main dish, which means that basically it's not going to last for as long on its uh, internal battery, so we have to watch out for that. But it does have that advantage that it doesn't rely on this in order to communicate back. Now, I'll, I'll close this. It's not reading properly anyway. Uh, this launcher should be able to uh, get it to orbit and then it should be able to transfer to Mars and all that easily, but it's not reading right for some reason. And that worries me. Mm, the way the stage pops up and down also worries me. Uh, we've replaced the antennae on the Astra stage with uh, better ones. And so we used to use these, let me get the Savionics out of the way, these Commutron HG55s which had issues. They consume 70 watts of power. Now, this Commutron DTS-M1 is our choice. It's got less power consumption. Effective range is longer because it's got a dish range of 3 gigameters. Effective range 580 gigameters or 580 million kilometers. So it can definitely handle Mars without any problem. And we have two of them. So less power consumption and more range sounds good. Um, the dish up here is an AIES Comtech CM60 dish. Its electric charge is a little bit suspiciously low, considering this one has uh, three, uh, 3 per minute, this one has 0.3 per minute, uh, and it has a longer range, 4 gigameters, instead of 3 gigameters. However, it does have a tighter cone angle, only 1.2 degrees. This one can handle 35 degrees. Not that I really need that, but maybe that's some sort of benefit. Anyway, um, so maybe that's an iffy thing, but real honestly, the way it should work is that this will use this Commutron 16 to communicate back to this one, and then this one would relay using these antennae. It'd be an odd situation where this was the item that actually determined whether the, we had success or failure, so that's what I'm going to go with. It's just a backup, and also it makes the probe look better, that's all. It just makes the probe look better. We have better solar panels, uh, not on the top here. The single panel solar panels are still the same, but as far as... Uh, we used to have down here on the Astra stage, we had six of these solar panels pr producing 189 watts. Let's say 200 for comparison's sake. It's alright to round up in this case, because we're comparing it with the new solar panels that we have, which are here, these uh, 2x6 ones, and these we have four of, and they each produce 410 watts. Let's say, let's round down here and say 400. So, uh, we used to have six, and they produce 200, so that's 1.2 kilowatts. Now we have four, producing 400 watts, so 1.6 kilowatts, and our antennae take less power. The Downside is we do have the Ranger Block 3 core, which requires 80 watts. So that's uh, an addition, but it does uh, go into low power mode 1.5 watts when time warping. So that's better. Uh, otherwise, the Delta Avionics package we have requires 120 watts uh, all the time. These extend like this, and so we'll probably want to point tail to the sun. They, they do have a downside, they cannot retract, but I don't see a situation where we will need to retract those on this mission. So that is the new mission to Deimos. We have a lot of fuel. Oh, I need to put the cone one on first. This is a weird case of nestled fairings, and I hope that doesn't cause a problem. At least it's uncrewed. So, after we do this, and then we also test the Nico 1744, we will attempt another moon landing. And maybe the Nico 1744 will play a part in that, but I doubt it. What the Nico 1744 really is for is putting together 
a, Mar a crewed Mars mission, or maybe a more robust uh, moon landing mission. In either case, we would plan to have two launches of the Nikos 1744 to build it. All right. So on that note, and not entirely knowing what kind of Delta V we're going to get out of this because MechJeb is not showing it properly, sorry for the way it's shaped, but these are flat stages, it's not one big fairing around the whole thing, so we ended up tapering it in. Maybe it's a better idea to have a fairing around the whole thing, but if I do that, uh, here, there's no good attachment point for this asterisk stage, so that's why I did it like this. The inner stage has an upper node that can that is height adjustable, though it doesn't like to obey my height adjustment. It seems to like to pop up and down randomly. But anyway, so that's a risk there. Mission costs 29000 It'll take 39 days to build it. Our Earth to Mars transfer window is in 43 days, so it should give us enough time to roll it out. Okay, save and build. Okay, here we are with the Deimos mission. Once again, trying to land on that feisty little moon. And it looks like out here it's reading 19,968 meters per second. I'm still not sure that's right, right. But at least uh, the Centaur stage is reading the amount that I was planning on. Uh, the Asterisk stage has a nice 4,000 meters per second. Yeah, it's lo it looks like it has all the numbers right. We are probably going to... Well, hmm, depending on how we launch, I might let it run, but we obviously have more than enough to get to orbit on the three stages of the Nico 621C. And the question is whether I let that burn for longer and use its delta V to give us an initial boost, and that depends on whether we are going to be pointed in the right direction for our transfer. Let us see. So I'm going to target the moon because we want to sort of flatten ourselves with the with respect to the rest of the ecliptic. Relative inclination of 43 degrees is definitely not flat. Let's see. I don't see any boil off. And the right direction would be out here. So we would want the, the launch to be on this side if possible. It's looking pretty good. Well, I mean, we've got 12 more degrees to go. I think we can let it run. We'll get some benefit out of it, maybe. As long as it doesn't provide a huge chunk of our... of our 3,000 meters per second for escape. Yeah, I'd say it should be alright. Uh, maybe I should keep the moon selected. Okay. All right. Expensive mission and all. This first stage is not recoverable because the parachutes and the floats actually would cost so much that it's not worth it. So we didn't add the recovery recoverability stuff to this. Okay, SAS on. Throttle is up. Well, um, I mean, if this doesn't work, of course, we have other chances. Uncrewed demo, Demos landing, 1,151 days. But... When you think about that, uh, how many transfer windows we'll have at our disposable, we really probably only have one or two more shots. Maybe only just one. So there is that. Okay, ignition. And launch. Nico 621C. Bringing our Deimos Centaur mission to orbit. Alright, we are well past maximum dynamic pressure. Past Mach 2. There's a bit of wobbliness, it looks like. You can see a uh, definite oscillation. I'm going to throttle down here. As we appear to have some oscillation out of all things. Let's just uh, let that back off a bit. That was unexpected.
Good thing the engines throttle. But I mean, we were barely above 2 G's at the time. Okay. Oh, shoot. Um, engine shut down. Set. And ignition. Oh, fudge. Uh, can it catch itself? Okay, wow. Some uh, need for struts on this mission, it looks like. Yeah, serious oscillation there. Well, I think it's safe to say the Nico 621C is not going to be human rated. Or even Kerbal rated at this rate. But it might be due to the root part being on the probe. I just realized that I didn't have capture mouse cursor on. There we go. Now it's capturing mouse cursor. That's because of the rocket profile videos. Probably means I live streamed on Twitch on Sunday without the mouse cursor, which is annoying. I always forget to reactivate it. There's some indication of shuddering, but no, none of the oscillations that we saw before, even though we're past 2.8 G's now. Okay, getting ready for the end of the second stage. Oh, there's some oscillations now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It seems like the centaur stage joint is the problem. Uh, okay, set. And ignition. Oh, come on, NK-19. Jeez, we've had some tough separations. But yeah, it seems like the joint between the Nico and the centaur are the problem. Is the problem. Well, we've kept the Ford fairing for a while, but I hesitate to separate without separating the, the fairings here, too. So yeah, we'll leave that. If I separate these fairings, the mission goes goes off. It's no longer attached to Centaur. Huh. Bad planning on my part. Yeah, we'll just wait until we've got shut down. We've got a lot of fuel. We should have plenty of margin for this mission. We're not carrying three different probes this time, we're just carrying one. Uh, we're, we have a better launcher. I don't know if we have any, any antennae that are safe to extend right now. Hmm. I could risk this one. Oh, cannot deploy while stowed anyway. Now we don't want to have too long an orbital period, otherwise our hydrogen will boil off. Also, it might just be cumbersome altogether, depending on how the fairing situation ends up. Okay, we are now boosting our apoapsis out this side. So you see, our, our apoapsis will end up around here. And we would have liked it round here-ish, but that's not a big gap, it's like 30 degrees. We could activate the antenna on the top. Okay, we've been boosted to a 2 hour and 19 minute orbit. That looks like is this. And now we have to separate and then plot for Mars. So, throw down, set. I, uh, yeah, I don't think it's a good idea to try and jettison that fairing while these aren't there. So that might have to do it for now, until we have the centaur finish its job. Bit of a pickle, because we're going to have electric charge consumption as a result. Okay, well the plots I've made are sort of finicky, and might cause problems, but the first maneuver is 2,500, thanks to the fact that we used the third stage to give us a boost. We didn't. We used about 1,000 meters per second there. This will get us uh, apoapsis that touches Mars's orbit. 
but then we do have to do a mid-course adjustment because the ascending and descending node were like 90 degrees away from where we are. So we have to go out there and make that adjustment and that costs 881. And then finally, this is the maneuver to make orbit around Mars. I've opted to keep our approach high around Mars and then use 3261 retrograde in order to bring our orbit down and then also a mild normal burn in order to make sure that we are in line with Deimos. Now I haven't plotted that very precisely because the first two burns are likely to be off. The first one especially is very very touchy. So we'll just do this and we'll see where we go from there. So it turns out we'll end up wasting a thousand meters per second anyway. So the same amount that we got from overburning the third stage we end up losing here because we have to ditch the centaur stage early. Well that's because I didn't plan to use the third stage in that way initially. Okay here we go ignition. And the two centaurs are lit. We didn't have any engine issues on the way up with the Nico rocket. Thank goodness. It's interesting, it only reads this decoupler now. It doesn't read the two side panels anymore. This is the two upper fairings. I wonder why that is. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, we lost one engine. Uh, hmm, with two engines we can't compensate for that. Just as I said that we didn't have any problems with engine issues. Well, alright. Uh, huh. That's a bit of a problem. We could reignite. We have a chance to reignite the two engines. I mean, uh... Oh, it has zero. It totally conked out on us. Oh. Yeah, not only did it shut down, it shut down and has no ignitions remaining. Total engine shutdown. Total engine failure. Maximum data units, mind you. Uh, wow. Mean time before failure, 218 minutes, and now it decides to bite us. Okay, well, at least it's not a crewed mission. Hmm... Well, we have to keep going. That means the Asterisk engines. But I would sure like to stabilize somehow. I'd rather use the fuel here to do it. But these thrusters are obviously not powerful enough. Well, we're obviously going to have to replot all the things. As it is, I don't know how well we're going to be able to do all the maneuvers we've got planned. We're losing a total of 1,700 meters per second out of this mission. We got the extra 1,000 boosts, but we're basically missing 700 then. I guess let's just make do. Alright. Um... Let's separate off. Okay. Unlock. Separate off the upper fairings. Okay. And as we come along, activate the engines and throttle. Okay, let's extend the solar panels, which we cannot retract. The commutatron message has gone away. We, will, um, we really don't need to activate both antennae, especially, yeah, I could even shut this one down, but it doesn't take that much power anyway, so. Okay, so taking stock 
Uh, it would take 800 to do the maneuver, the mid-course plane change. And, well, call it 900. And then the maneuver to get into orbit around Mars is about 3,400-ish. So you talk about 4,300. So we're not going to be able to do all that with this. We'll have to rely on this mini stage that I put here. Well, thank goodness we did use the third stage to get some extra delta V. Otherwise, we would have been down 1,700 meters per second instead of just 700. Okay, a little bit further, but a good match. Let's replot all the things, and I'll show you what I come up with. All right, so we have some options here. Uh, the mid-course adjustment will take 888.7 meters per second. And then, if we want to make sure that this stage gets captured around Mars, we'll have to bring it closer to Mars to take advantage of the Oberth effect. And in that case, we could use 2150 to make sure it gets captured around Mars. However, that's not optimal for transferring to Deimos. Uh, and we don't strictly need it because, uh, and I forgot about this, uh, we've already got communication support around Mars with the previous missions having these stages. We have two of these stages hanging around Mars relaying communications back home, um, not even counting the AIES dish. Uh, the probe can communicate with either one of those two. So, strictly speaking, we don't need to capture around Mars. We could also make this looser. We could spend as much as 2,300 in order to capture around Mars. So maybe I'll back off of this a little bit. Right now it's inside the orbit of Phobos. And well, we'll keep it to tenths. Let's say, well, let's check around here. We want to keep it in line with uh, Deimos's orbit though. You can see it's too low there now. So let's raise it up a bit. That way we'll be able to correct the inclination as well. And we just want to see what it takes to get into the barest minimum orbit. Well, let's say that. That's 2400. Okay, well, it's not barest minimum. Okay, at Phobos it takes about 2,250 to capture, but we also want to do an inclination change to match Deimos. So, and this is just so that we can combine it into the same maneuver. But have we passed our limit? I think we probably have. Maybe we're going to have to meet Deimos at a mid-course adjustment or do the adjustment higher up instead of right here. So let's say instead we actually did the adjustment higher up like round here for instance. That's only 50 meters per second and that's pretty close right there. Hold on. Um, go back to the other maneuver. Well there you go. Deimos encounter. Well if we sum it up and do everything like perfectly 888.7 and 2300 and then 50 this basically barely makes that but we have something plotted we have a plan so we are going to nope alarm clock add alarm 90 days that's when our next maneuver is we don't need the Earth to Mars transfer window, we'll go with this mission. And next thing is to test Nico 1744 though. We need to make sure that this is good on its power consumption. So let's get into daylight. Well, it looks great right now. Yep, totally recharging. We'll leave it be. Alright, back to the Space Center. Okay, it is March 14th, 1969. We have four more months until, roughly, until the anniversary of Apollo 11. We have 25 days until we get landing technology, such as it is, remember, tiny landing struts. 
I think it would be prudent for us to spend some more, oops, not that settings, no, upgrades. Get some more upgrade points and hasten that R&D just a bit. So I'm going to bring us down to 600,000 there and increase our science rate. That gets about well, 23 days. What can we do? Um, there's no easy, you know, there's no easy way to speed it up or anything. Hire some more scientists? I don't know. We have rolled out the Nico 1744. It took six days to roll it out, by the way. We could get more um, more upgrade points if we unlock some more technologies, but I'll do that later. Right now, we will launch the Nico 1744, and since it's a fuel depot, we do want to get it in line with the moon, as usual. So we'll make sure about that. Okay, 2,000 ton rocket. Throttle up. SAS is on. 9,544 meters per second. Pretty close to what you would expect to need for orbit with a thrust weight ratio that this has. So let's hope for no engine failures. Let's hope that the boosters separate properly. 90 tons to orbit. Here we go. Ignition. We have a minor issue, but we'll launch. The gimbling should handle that. Um, but we might have to manually shut that one down if it's... Uh... Yeah, I don't know what the situation for that is. Performance loss. We've got an engine... What? We've launched... <laughs> why, why are we suddenly having problems on this launch? Okay, well, we have an engine shut down. We'll have to go steeper in order to compensate for loss of thrust. Um, that's one of the core engines or one of the booster engines? At least it highlights the engines. That's a booster engine. That's got the performance loss. It's got low specific impulse and low thrust, but it should burn the same time. This engine is a core engine, so they're compensating for that. They'll end up having to burn a little bit longer. But uh, they're rated for 3 minutes, and we've only got them burning for 2 minutes and 48 seconds, so maybe they'll be alright. Okay, turning. Gingerly. Oh, we've got performance loss on th this engine here. Wow, so many engine issues suddenly. Yeah, that, that engine's got a low specific impulse now. You know what, I, I, I'm going to shut that one down once we get enough TWR because I don't need it guzzling the fuel and it's at the center. Okay, yeah, I'm shutting this one down. Hmm, whether this is human raid or not, I'm not entirely sure we can say. How, how many data units do we have? We're full up on data units on the NK-15, by the way. 10,000. Mean time before failure on the NK-15 is 75 minutes only. So, I guess... It's a lot to bear on one mission, but at least it's still going. The boosters will be separating soon. Okay, set. Uh, not quite the, well, um, we'll call that the Nico spin or something. Um, it's not the Korolev cross. It's, it's the wrong way around. Could have been worse. We've got two engines out on this stage right now. The center one and one of the outside ones. can tell it's not totally happy about this situation and I don't know probably more will go out because the rate of burn time is only three minutes and they're gonna go beyond that well the probability that we get the 90 tons to orbit is fairly low at this point Because 90 tons is right at the performance limit of this particular rocket, but we'll see how much how far short we go, and we'll account for that. 
But yeah, we lost it though. We, we were losing engines left and right here. We're now below a 1G of acceleration and it's starting to have control issues. We've lost half of our engine, more than half of our engine, okay, we've lost two thirds of our engines. The ones we have left are all on this side, like here. Good gambling. Okay, set. And ignition. Ignition. <laughs> When I say ignition, I mean ignition, darn it. We better dump those fairings. Ooh! Wah! Fairly clear. Good thing I made sure this stage has more than a uh, thrust weight ratio 1, huh? We. We're gonna have trouble making orbit though. Because we have to keep pitched up, our time to apoapsis is going down, and we need time to do the second stage, the uh, third stage, sorry. These engines have a hundred minutes mean time before failure. The third stage engines have 300 minutes. They all have maximum data units. So we can't make that any better. Impressive though, I mean given all the engine failures, how well the first stage did. It's uh, maybe we can say that it's human rated with all that redundancy and the way it kept stable like that. Or Kerbal rated, sorry. Person rated. I think person rated is a better general term to cover both humans and Kerbals. Thrust to weight ratio of the third stage is 0.61. Let's, uh, right at the end of this, give it a little bit more pitch, I think. It's a six minute stage, that third stage. We don't have uh, more than a minute to apoapsis right now. And we're not that high either. Okay, set. Ignition. I I'm just gonna pitch up to like 45 degrees. We're gonna aim for as high an apoapsis as we can get to give the, the tank some time to do its business. So this is the only choice we've got. Oh heck, 50 degrees. We did uh, recover the first stage, though I doubt we can use those engines again. Definite problems with those engines. Um, stage value 19,000, total refunds 18,000. I guess maybe they could refurbish the engines if they know what's wrong with them. Terminal velocity 6.48 is pretty iffy. Well, it is familiar. Every time we try and test one of these rockets with a fuel depot, the same sort of thing happens, doesn't it? Except now we've made the situation even more extreme because the little tiny Estes engine, not Estes, Astra, Astras engine, is trying to push a 90 ton tank instead of a 30 or 50 ton tank. But again, it's the necessary data I need to make future decisions. So even if it doesn't work, I'll know I'll know what went wrong and how to adjust for it. Tough to say what would hap have happened without the performance losses and the engine failures. But for now, to be conservative, we'll keep the 
rating of this rocket to 80 ton is max. We're likely to have future engine failures anyway. Yeah, there's probably no way this could be saved. I mean, let's unlock the fuel here. I think it's a two hour stage for heaven's sakes. Three hour stage. And we'll need uh, about a tenth of that at least to make orbit. So, that's not good. That's 18 minutes. And we're not going to be able to get 18 minutes time to apoapsis, I don't think. About well, 3 minutes to apoapsis. But we need even more fuel because I kept the pitch up more than I might have wanted to. 4 minutes. Well, set. At least we're not leaving this in orbit or something. Insufficient avionics. Oh! The avionics core on this can only handle 65. This is 90 tons. Well, um, we'll just keep pointing in this direction then. 0 0.026 G's. Max acceleration, 252 millimeters per second squared. I give up. <laughs> I give up. Alright, this is gonna crash. And the rocket, can you say it works? Well, it, it, it didn't flip or anything, so that's good. 90 tons, maybe we should shave that down a bit. But on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.